good evening friends this is dr sanjay sonar i am a laparoscopy surgeon and i am also specialized into bariatric surgery and hernia surgery i consult at bridge candy hospital okhand hospital godrej hospital and i have my own hospital in chembur by the name of laparoscopy and scopy center monsoon brings lot of fun and uh, in places like mumbai and because of the global climatic changes also this fun may soon turn into a terrible state of affairs so we may have water logging and then this water logging may seep this pollutants into the water bodies and may cause problems now whenever this water runs into these water bodies it also carries along with it some sediments some chemicals pesticides fertilizers bacteria into this water body if one is staying in a society then the underground water storage tanks may also get contaminated with the water and then you may have because of the mixing of human excreta or animal excreta you could have diseases like cholera typhoid hepatitis as well as dysentery now moreover because of the dampness of monsoon one may also have more growth of bacteria and fungi on the food stuff that we prepare and we eat so one has to make sure that one takes adequate care during monsoon see the common symptoms of gi disturbances the patient may come with is acidity loss of appetite nausea vomiting these patients could also have loose motion or stools after meals after eating their meals they may feel like passing stools they may have colicky pain they may also pass blood in the stools in very rare instances diseases like typhoid may also cause pneumonia and then this patient may come with cough sometimes because of the severe infection and bacteria going into the system the patient may also complain of breathlessness on examination of such patients one may find that they are confused they are delirious they have heartburn they have choking sensation they may have upper abdominal acidity constriction sensation and they could be jaundice they complain of gas bloats and pain in abdomen when to consult a doctor that's a very good question in case the patient has very high grade fever or he is delirium he is confused or he has an headache chills he has dryness of mouth he is passing less amount of urine that means the patient is dehydrated and then they should consult a doctor at the same time if the urine that they are passing is more yellowish in color then there is a possibility that the patient could be having jaundice sometimes these patients are unable to tolerate anything orally and hence taking any oral tablets may be very difficult for them and the disease that is present inside may keep on increasing some of this patient also have too many loose motions so that takes away a lot of water from the body and the patient may be left dehydrated and in case of severe colitis or infection of the large bowel the patient may have colicky pain in the abdomen and this severe pain may be unrelenting and patient may not be able to take oral tablets in that case they should go to the doctor and carry forward next treatment see what the patient could do at home is they can check their temperature or if there is a relative close by they can ask them to have a look at the eyes of the patient if the eyes are sunken that means the amount of fluid that is there in the tissue has gone down and the patient could be dehydrated if the sclera is yellow colored it may be suggestive of jaundice the other test may better be done by the doctor and the lab test that a patient may get done before after they consult the doctor or sometimes if they are too sick they can go ahead with the cbc or liver function test vidal test for typhoid the stool as well as the urine can be tested the stool can be tested for any bacteria that is infecting the gut sometimes it could also be because of virus 
but these viruses are not cultured in Indian labs very frequently. And travelers may pick up what is called as traveler's diarrhea and they require special tests to diagnose it. Urine tests can tell us whether the patient has jaundice. An X-ray abdomen may be advised by the doctor if the patient has very severe pain in abdomen and whether the typhoid has caused any injury to the intestine and the contents of the intestine are leaking in the abdomen. In that case, a sonography of the abdomen may also help the doctor treat the patient. See, the patient can be treated at home if the illness is very mild. What can we do to the patient? We can give them rest. We can make them lie on the bed. But one should also give some rest to the intestine. How can we do that? We can ask them to avoid very heavy food like non-vegetarian food or fried items. Instead, they can take something very easy to digest like rice, rice kanji, or they can have some soups or they can have khichdi, or they can have dahi as well as rice. So curd rice is another thing that I would request the patients to have at home. Another thing that is very easily done is rehydration of the patient. So when, whatever fluid the body is losing by way of loose motions, by way of vomiting, can be replenished if the patient is having enough amount of water. Now make sure that this water also has some amount of oral rehydration solution in it. And suppose that is not easily available, one can always use sugar and salt solution at home. So this salt will give enough electro electrolytes to the patient and the patient may not feel weak in the body. One can also use some over-the-counter medications as a second step. What are these medications? Because there are bad bacteria or virus inside the intestine, one can give them probiotics. Now these are Probiotics are substances which may give more push to the normal bacteria which are there inside the intestine. So once these normal bacteria are replenished, the bad bacteria are pushed away and the patient may recover at home. If however the patient is not recovering with this, the patient as a third step may consult a doctor where he may prescribe some medications. Now after this medication also some patient may not feel better. So in that case, if there is no response, the doctor may ask for some tests. And in those tests, we have already discussed, one can get a CBC, LFT, then Vidal test, urine routine test, X-ray or sonography. If however, despite this treatment, the patient is not responding, then the patient should be admitted and then given IV injections and antibiotics so that he feels better. What are the routine practices that will prevent monsoon GI problems? Now, first thing one should look into is avoid tap water. So the tap water may be contaminated, even though municipal corporation is doing a wonderful job of disinfecting it or decontaminating it, there's a possibility that the water may get contaminated. So don't drink this water directly. Either use a purifier or you can boil the water and you can use the same boiled water to clean the utensils as well. Otherwise, what will happen? You have cleaned the water, but the utensils, are utensils that we are using for cooking or for serving may be cleaned by tap water and they may still carry the infection into the person who is eating through those instruments and utensils. Make sure that you wash your hands properly so that after going to toilet, one may touch some other surfaces and carry those bacteria into the foodstuff. Another thing one can do very easily is the wash the vegetables as well as the fruits that we are going to use. Mm. So how can we do that? We should use diluted vinegar. One can soak them in salt water or one can use potassium permanganate to disinfect these. One should also be aware of the symptoms. So in case the patient has any pain, vomiting, diarrhea or high colored urine, then they should be seeking a doctor's attention. Sometimes we have seen patients who are going for swimming in some water park or some public swimming pool because the other people are not very clean or somebody may pass stools or pass urine or some small kid may play some mischief inside the water. These bacteria may enter through the mouth into the stomach of these patients and may harm this. So please make sure that the swimming pool or the water activity park has 
good level of disinfectant in the water that you are going to play in. Another very useful preventive practice is to get yourself vaccinated. So there are vaccines against cholera, vaccines against typhoid, as well as hepatitis A. So make sure if you're going to areas which have a very high endemic rate of these diseases, one could get vaccinated. On the other side, one can also help the community to take initiatives by which the sanitation of that area, the water supply of that area is well looked into and the cross-contamination of the potable water does not occur. I have put up a picture of Kent purifier. Now this, you may use any other brand. However, this purifier releases ozone into the water in which you can dip your vegetables as well as fruits. Now ozone will kill all the bacteria that are present on the surface of this uh, fruits as well as vegetables. So one has to make sure that vegetables like cauliflower, which have got a lot of crevices in it and may be very difficult to clean through routine process, be dipped into water, which releases ozone through this instrument. However, one has to make sure that the ozone does not enter into the person who is cooking. So this activity has to be carried away at a distance away from the person or make sure that the room is well ventilated and so that whatever ozone is released by the machine doesn't go into your breath. Otherwise, it may harm you. So please make sure that when you're using these uh, purifiers, you have to take care of yourself. So we, one can also use vinegar which is diluted you can use this purifier or one can use salt water to clean these vegetables as well as fruits one can also use potassium permanganate in small quantity these crystals have to be dissolved in water and you have to soak the vegetables as well as fruits inside it and then wipe them with a dry cloth and go ahead and use them the next question is suppose one is traveling how can we use the water that is available while traveling? One can use bislery. However, now there are options like these bottles that I have put up on the screen. So one, if one puts water in these bottles, they have got filters in them. So this filter will take away the particulate matter, the bacteria, the viruses, and the water is very safe to drink. There are also certain other instruments which contain silver. That silver rod can be dipped in the glass of water that the person wants to consume. This silver, if it is dipped for sufficient amount of time, it will kill the bacteria that are present in the water. One can also use tablets that I have shown here, tablets like Aquapura. Now, these can be put into the potable water in the desired quantity and that will kill the bacteria as well as viruses that are present in the water. So that is another simple way of taking care of yourself when you're traveling or when you're say trekking where there may not be a good source of water potable water available to you so rather than drinking the stream water or water which is available on the road one can use these gadgets to make sure that no bacteria no virus enters the body so monsoon time is a time when we should enjoy have fun make the best of the rains. At the same time, one should also take adequate care of our GI tract, make sure that we ourselves, as well as our family members and friends, enjoy the monsoon and don't get sick or don't have to go to a doctor's.